Okay, I'll call this meeting to order uh, for October the 3rd, 2017. Uh, Mayor McKenzie is uh, away today, so he's unable to attend. Uh, I also feel that in the recent events uh, that uh, we've seen from Las Vegas here this week and the un unfortunate mm -hmm. events that took place there that I feel that we should offer a, a moment of silence for those victims who have fallen and also to the people who are injured. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Glory, resolved that the agenda for the October 3rd, 2017 regular meeting of Council be received. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorie, resolved that the minutes of the September 19th, 2017 regular meeting of Council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, so uh, delegations and hearings. We have with us tonight uh, Ken Cocott, our long by law enforcement agent. So come forward, Ken, and you can present your report, please. Um, I kind of gave you guys a monthly report and you've probably looked at it but I just kind of want to briefly go over the report that was given to you in the board package if that's okay yeah um, I now use MPIC instead of the RCP to run the license plates and I recently kind of found an app that dates and time stamp stamps the pictures that I send with it each ticket and because these pictures are kind of proof of the violation there's no issues with the office staff or the frontline staff when the fines are being paid. Um, in the past, without the pictures, they say it's, it says a thousand words. And as I wrote in the bylaw report, there's 13 tickets issued for September, but I didn't say that four were at the hospital in that new zone. Uh, two were in front of a hydrant, two were facing the wrong direction. Uh, four was overtime parking and one in a no parking zone. And one of the tickets was issued actually when I was out for supper on Friday night. So did that the next following Monday. Um, September animals, there was only four animals picked up and taken to the vet. And um, I have been doing patrols in the Legion. I'm not sure if you've seen me or not, but I made eight patrols at the Legion over the evenings and weekends in September. Um, there was one fine of $100 for a dog running at large. I don't know if it's been paid yet, but I found out who it was and he got his fine. Um, Blaine Healy was called. I had a complaint about beavers cutting down trees on Crescent Drive. That's a huge problem. <laughs> um, I also received a phone call from Animal Control in Vancouver about a dog that may have come into town. It was, came, might have come from this town. It was picked up by Animal Control in Vancouver. The guy said that it was licensed from Swan River and he was coming back. Um, that wasn't the case. It was never licensed here. It went back five years and it was never licensed. And they said that's not surprising. He was a transient there. And he was just trying to, if it would have been licensed here, he would have got a cut in the fine as, as it was. Uh, as it was, that didn't happen. Um, there have been a few unsightly property complaints. There's been one on 8th Avenue that a lot of it's been cleaned up. The grass still needs to be cut and tightened up a little bit more, but the couches and all the garbage has, seems to have been moved. And I did get a complaint about a friendship sale property. I contacted Paula and it was cleaned up, I think within the I'm not sure it was that day, but it was cleaned up the next day. Um, I did send two letters to two business owners about all their trailers and equipment staying on the street for too long a period of time. Uh, they've been given to the middle of October and have them moved. As of today, one of the two business owners has taken everything off the street and one is hasn't done that yet, maybe we buck in a little bit. And there was a fifth wheel or a trailer on 9th Avenue North. I gave him notice to move the trailer, it's already been moved. Um, 
there was a concern <laughs> over a golf cart being driven on residential streets and the Arboretum. Um, I spoke to the RCMP about that because of this kind of gray area for me. Um, after I got the information from them, I went back to the resident and told them it wouldn't be allowed as per the Highway Traffic Act. Um, he said he would follow that, but he may or may not. But I told him if he gets some of the older RCMP members that knew him may have given him a bit of a break, but with the newer members, he might not get a break. And the town wasn't going to give him a permit to drive. He kind of wanted the town to give a permit to drive in a kind of a three block area. I said we wouldn't do that. Counselor Gloria. Is that something we do for people? We give them permits? We've never done that. We just asked before. Just a permit. Asked, oh. He asked if the town would give him a permit so he could drive his golf cart in town. I didn't even know that, that such a mechanism existed. But no, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just make up a permit for you. You want to do this illegal? <laughs> Although, when I went to the police, like there's a lot of the wheelchairs, electric wheelchairs that drive around on the street. At least his golf cart has a horn, it's got signal lights, it's got headlights. <laughs> It's more legal than a lot of it, but whatever. It's not allowed, so you might get caught. Um, just a couple days ago, I sent a letter to a local contractor. He had a, started to apply for a business license, but um, he never did come in with a proof of insurance, so I sent him a letter to remind him to hurry up and come in with a proof of insurance. And that was just the end of last week, so he might just be getting that. Um, I want to, and I'm going to be updating a uh, version of bylaw 398 just to try to clarify some gray areas and deal with more current issues that weren't really relevant in 1998. That's the parking bylaw, or the, sorry, it's not the parking bylaw, it's um, to control and regulate the parking of campers, bolts, trailers, that bylaw. So it should get looked at already. It's, some of it is getting a little ancient. So hopefully in the near future, an updated copy will be sent to you for your approval. And there has been, I've been in contact with Sergeant Hansen. Um, I will be having a meeting with him in the near future too. There's some bylaws that the town has that are kind of part of the Highway Traffic Act. And I want to clarify what I can do and what they do. And uh, I'm kind of drawing up a list of stuff that I want to discuss with him. And that'll be the next week or two, too. And that's basically all I have for you. Any questions? Councillor DeLaurier. Um, I just want to compliment you on your report. And, you know, things always seem to go in spurts. And I, and I must say, in the last three or four months, bylaw enforcement complaints seem to have, I don't know if it's something in the water, but received lots of complaints about, about bylaw infractions. So I think it's good to get your message out there that bylaws are being enforced. They're not just. Uh, words on paper, they, they do have meaning and they are to be followed. Because a lot of people, I'm following the rules, but so-and-so isn't. It's good to see that, that everybody has this play on the same playing field. So I, I should apologize you to you guys too, because I uh, should be doing a monthly report to you guys, and I kind of lacked on it. So you'll be receiving that every month now. Well, I, I, and you know, I, I like, appreciate the fact that you came in person too. A lot of times we receive reports, and some of them are okay to receive, but I think Especially in light of the fact that our meetings are public, the media is here. It's good to get our, a message out there that that these rules are the rules of the town and and, and they are enforced. And I think when you do that in person and, and add some uh, some uh, uh, experience behind what the words on the paper are, it uh, helps it did, a lot. It did seem for a while there there was a <laughs> there was a lot coming in, but I, it's kind of calmed down. Councilor Moria. Uh, Question regarding those uh, businesses, like home-based businesses that you wrote the letters to and stuff like that, and you mentioned towards like equipment and trailers on the street. What a, what is the, the bylaw? Or can you clarify for me what the bylaw is if they have that all within their property, like in their backyard or front yard or whatever, like on their property. Is that all that really says right now is they can have two unregistered vehicles neatly parked in the back of the property, but well, it doesn't say nothing about trailers and equipment that mm -hmm. sort of. But if you're when we read it, it says like a business that needs to be within the confines of the dwelling. Right. Yeah, so, there's only bylaws. Yeah, so uh, yeah, nice. So if you have all kinds of tillers and tractors, that's not within your dwelling that's, anymore. No, it isn't. So is that so that should be the bylaw, or I guess it is. Like I, I just got that zoning bylaw, and I kind of got it from 
run, I believe, and I'm kind of going with him with that song too and trying to figure it all out. And we did include that page from the zoning bylaw. And we did include that page from the zoning bylaw with the letter. Mm -hmm. With those letters. That and there was no issues with one of the people up there. Maybe it's with, I don't know. And I think it that's in your complaint. It came from a complaint, yeah. And second thing is to not probably burst your bubble, but in my other day job, there's going to be some changes to parking in within PMH that may make you busier. So once more public information becomes available on that. Um, I may have heard about that. Have fun. Councilor <laughs> Mike. Thank you. But it may not. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Thank you uh, for being proactive. It's appreciated. The dog that was causing issues south, north of uh, Conrad, is that yes. under control now? That was under control probably the day before you received that complaint. <clears throat> okay. um, I was dealing with it for off and on, maybe two or three times yeah. over the course of the summer. And I mean, there's kind of steps that I followed. And the day before that, I guess you were contacted. Um, I had dealt with it, and I think the problem is solved. I don't believe the dog is even there anymore. Was that dog a German shepherd? shepherd? That was kind of a mix. Breed. It wasn't a, a dangerous dog. It wasn't going to hurt anybody, but it barked and it would run up to you. And the person that gave you the complaint is very, very scared of any animal. Because there was a dog running loose last Sunday behind Conrad's in the back streets there, a German Shepherd dog, so it had no tags on it. So. So I will check tomorrow legs. again. No, I have four legs. <laughs> I will check again. I, I have been going by there two or three times a week and it's been gone. I got a picture of the dog I'll share with you tomorrow. Oh, please, so. if you send it to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, relative to the issue at the Arboretum, I appreciate that you followed up really quickly. You talked to the person that, that we're concerned about, and uh, apparently that's under control too. So, just uh, thank you for being. I'm not sure how he knew that. Pardon me. Yeah. I'm not sure how he knew that you were. He, I was. My name never popped up. Okay. But, uh, the president got a fairly aggressive call from that individual, being concerned about the fact that she'd taken it, thought that she had taken it to you, and uh, she told me. I did not tell him. I, I accept yeah. that completely, uh, but uh, I appreciate that you dealt with it, and uh, apparently he's cognizant of what the concern is. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, first off, it was a quad. I mean, the complaint came through as a quad that was driving an arboretum, and it was actually a golf cart, and it yeah. probably wasn't going to tear up the grass. But, you know, yeah. If there's anything else, he, figured, you see, uh, he had met with this woman uh, personally, and then he convinced that she had made the phone call, or in fact, she had. Okay. She fooled me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for Ken? Okay. Well, thank you, Ken. We appreciate the work that you do. My law enforcement is not always a, a rosy job out there to do, and sometimes you have to make some tough decisions, but we do have bylaws that everybody expects everybody to follow and, 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 uh, and act upon. So, And also, we appreciate that when you bring forth any of the bylaws that you feel that need to be updated and, and changed too, because those always have to be, uh, you know, moving, moving along as well, so, okay. and updated. Also, I mean, <clears throat> I do bylaws, but still probably close to 70% of my time is still with the handy van, yeah. with the, you know, driving, bookings and stuff, so bylaw isn't dealt with maybe as much as it should be either, so, but I'm, doing as much as they can. So, so, so what you're saying is like there could be more resources allocated to bylaw enforcement? Certain weeks, yes. <laughs> so, and I did lose one driver. Um, I don't think she'll be coming back, to be honest. She was in an accident um, over the course of the summer, horse to the horse, and I don't think she'll be coming back. So I may be looking for another part time person. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Sorry to take your time. <laughs> See you thank you. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor DeLaurier, resolved that the bylaw report for September 2017 be received. 
Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we have public hearing notice. Uh, it's, uh, I call the hearing to order to hear variation application number 5, 2017. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application. To permit an accessory building on property without a main building on the property described as lot 2, plan 39932. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person make a representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. It appears that we have none of that, so upon hearing all persons present, I adjourn this hearing. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delory, resolve that variation order application number 5, 2017, to permit an accessory building to be constructed on a lot without a main building on the property located number two, plan 39932, be approved. Further be it resolved that this approval is subject to the approval of all other required permits. Discussion? Who is this and what is it? Uh, Julie? It's um, Greenish's property. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's the property that's right next to their property or in behind it. It used to be a roadway? Yeah. yeah. Public access or something? Yeah. And they're, and, they're, and they're putting a storage shed. But because there's no um, main building there, they need to have a variation to put just a storage shed on that lot. Right. Further discussion? All in favor? Council White. If I read the map right, <coughs> lot two or lot six? Uh, it is lot two. But on my map, lot two is, is another individual's property. Right here. There's two lot twos. There we go. I have no problem with that one. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Yeah. There's two. <coughs> Okay, so we have uh, resolution 478. This has to do with, like, do I read this resolution? I see that we also have a you resolution. Yeah, you're missing the agenda. Oh, sorry, you're right. Sorry, thank you, Council Oriel. Uh, AMM convention, uh, we uh, have to uh, decide which ministers are going to meet up with. So. Uh, do we have a wish list yet? I'm assuming that RCMP will be one of them again. And oh, Alistair. Okay. Conservation. Sustainable development is a more appropriate term. They usually want to know what we want to talk to them about? Yeah. yeah. I certainly have two that come to my mind. Uh, the moose issue, which is a huge uh, opponent to people who live in our valley who outfit and uh, bring in people to help the moose. I don't believe there's any plan at the moment to what happens if and when the season opens. These, uh, the hatchery, which is uh, the, the golden goose that provides uh, stocking for the duck and pork, to my knowledge, which is a huge issue for tourism and recreation in our community. The hatchery's been under duress for quite some time. So between the hatchery and the moose, I think mean, uh, that's the two things that jump to my mind. Councillor I'd like to add to that also with sustainable development, a possibility of uh, access through the park for a possible ATV trail in the Duck Mountains. That too would uh, help with uh, tourism and attract more uh, more people into the area. That's Rochelle Spires, who's the minister. I would like to talk to her too. Her, her uh, special assistant is Minister Wolchuk. No, MLA Wolchuk. Is it? With health, I think they would probably bring up the CT scanner, uh, of course, and uh, a few other things, but that would be on the top of the list with the health minister. Uh, please? Oh, sorry, councillor side. Also with the health minister, I think we just have to keep nudging them and talking about the uh, northern patient transport. Oh, How huge. On the, on the, on the east side of the province, it's the 52nd parallel. Fifty first, and on the uh, and on, on the west side. What is it called? What is it called? Fifty third. So it'd be nice if we can still keep 
pushing that and get that changed because just due to our geography, you know, our location, uh, basically, you know, we're, we're too far north. Like, there's nobody else in the province that has the same traveling issues that we have. If you go north of us to the PAW, they have more patient transport, so they, they automatically qualify for a plane ride. For us, we're, we're just too far south and we're five hours in an ambulance every time. Where in the northern community, Dauphin doesn't have that issue, Winkler, Morden, Steinbeck, nobody has those issues but us. Please? Do we want to meet with the RCMP again? Yeah, that would be the sure. similar questions that we could present to you. The report looks like that there's. You could write uh, down library funding too, mm -hmm. behind the Minister Squires. No, she's not that anymore. She's not that anymore. Who is? I can't remember. I can, I can we'll find out. Minister, yeah, yes, okay. or whatever that guy's called, auxiliary for the RCP. Okay. Or so the same items that we <coughs> are going to talk or try to talk to the D division about? Yeah. But please? Okay. Perhaps uh, infrastructure regarding our inability to get, I don't want to use the word guarantee, but a commitment for uh, uh, the main street. That's a darn good idea, for yeah. sure. And we could bring up the snow clearing issues. Possibly so, turning lane. That's a good idea. Turning lane. Does Mr. Minister Cullen take care of again? He's uh, the uh, industry and trade. Yeah, industry and economic oh, development. Is he still? Uh, he has switched. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, Ben Peterson. So that was uh, MIT inability to get a commitment for Main Street uh, snow cleaning. Is that? Uh, and, uh, get no commitment and for the Main Street uh, resort. Resort. Okay. And snow clearing. Okay. Okay. okay, is that it? Good start. When do we have to have those in, Julie? 27. If anybody else has any ideas of what we could meet, because obviously we're not going to be able to meet them all, so if you have any other recommendations to Julie, maybe just forward my talk to her. Yeah, just send me an email. Okay, okay. moving on to uh, new business, and we have the proposal to subdivide some property in town. I do have a resolution here to table this. So do I go ahead and read the resolution, or do we just go on tabling it? You could just uh, talk about the resolution and then go forward with okay. the resolution to table. So moved by Council Dory, seconded by Council Morio, resolved that the proposed subdivision of Part South Half, Section 203627 West, and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Relations Community and Regional Planning Branch as file number 4455-17-7398 by be hereby approved. And there's been an email or a part added here so that you can read all the details of, of this, um, which is quite thorough. So I do have a resolution here to um, uh, have a table. So um, is there a reason for it to be tabled? Um, this is the first I've seen this um, when we got the agenda on Friday and talking with the administration that there's still some errors or some stuff that needs to be clarified and I think it needs to go back to the committee to get more discussion and bring it up to date and talk back with the, so that we have all our I's dotted and T's crossed and exactly what we want before we do with the resolution and then have to make amendments to the resolution later on and as we'll get it right the first time instead of kicking it a few times. Okay, so. fair enough. So I have a resolution uh, moved by Councilor Morio and seconded by Councilor Gloria. We will also sign the original resolution. Resolved that the resolution number 478 be tabled. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. So when you're ready, Derek, let's call the committee. Yep.
Okay, so we'll move right on to the Superintendent of Public Works. Uh, any questions to Derek and his department? Uh, with any of the points that he mentioned out in his report? Councilor Morio. Um, why is Hydro mandating to move the natural gas meter at the shop? Uh, there's a, a exhaust vent. We have to be at least three meters away. Uh, that's where the meter. I guess that's their new criteria for for where a meter should go, at least three meters away from an exhaust vent. So if we're hooking in to that meter or that line, so we're line probably no longer grandfathered from what was there before. To correct. Councillor White, I think was first. Just a uh, compliment to <coughs> Mr. Poole for the executive work getting that job. Chair, bench ready for the Francis Beard uh, dedication. Uh, appreciate it very much. Thank you. Councilor <coughs> Um Colleagues, on the shredding pilot project that went on, are we going to be getting a report on how that went? Yeah. There's some mention of it. Yeah, yeah. Terry, okay. we compiled the information. Terry's giving me what I need, and okay. I should get it. Sure. Um, other thing on the water main flushing, did you get done everything you wanted to get done this year? Everything. Everything? Okay. So how, how much of the town do we do in a year? Uh, for, for water main flushing? Yeah. 100%. Oh, at 100%? Okay. It's the sewer we do percentages. Okay. Derek, can, for some people that do ask me why we do that, can maybe explain why we do flushing? Uh, it's basically to clean out, mostly to clean out the pipes. That's the, the main function of the flushing. Like we do treat for, for manganese. Uh, in the treatment plant, but we don't get 100% of it. So, uh, and there we also add an additive which which helps uh, disintegrate buildup on our pipes. But again, we don't get it all the time. So flushing is a normal practice for for a lot of municipal water systems to make sure your pipes are are clean. And uh, it is a it's a heavy flush of water that every pipe basically goes through, and it gives it a good clean out and stops that buildup because eventually it will it will crust on there and it will be as hard as the, the pipe and it will eventually uh, be very hard to, to take off. So flushing helps. <coughs> swabbing obviously helps. We try and, we're trying to implement a program on swabbing to even further clean the, the pipe lining, but uh, yeah, hopefully we get that in the coming years. Good, thank you. Councilor On the 6th Avenue <laughs> lift station, um, when it, I remember with the other lift stations we did, we did there was a period where there was a switch over and it, w it was kind of a uh, apprehensive time. When is that happening? That is happening scheduled for October 16th. So now that we know the date, we're going to be going house to house in that catchment area, explaining people to conserve water. We'll, we'll, we'll tell them of the critical times of when this is exactly going to happen. It will be during the night time. And, uh, You'll be keeping tabs on it as it progresses? You definitely. Okay. That makes me feel better. Yeah. Any further questions? All right. So moved by Councilor Delore, second by Councilor Morial. Resolve the Superintendent of Public Works report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Department to report uh, moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Morio. Resolved that the fire department report for September 2017 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And the uh, administration meeting uh, minutes. Everybody had a chance to go over that. And if you have any further questions in regards to that, uh, you're invited to ask Julie whatever you'd like to ask. Councilor White. Good question. Okay. All right. So moving on, uh, Council Member and CEO reports. We'll start with Councilor White. Sure. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Uh, relatively busy. We had a, a safe house meeting, and I think the mental health issue is becoming more and more significant in our community. The data is just recently released by Prairie Mountain Health 
I think the number one issue for people admitted to the hospital with wounds was an issue caused by self-inflicted wounds, which obviously is a mental health issue. And uh, I think it's something that our council and our community have to take a more serious look at. So the Safe House people are quite concerned about that. There's a possibility of some funds, possibility of funds coming for the capital construction, but that uh, Minister, Mr. Wolchuk is trying to help out there. Uh, Paramount Health uh, Board meeting in Donovan, uh, as we all are aware, there's 12 doctors uh, now signed for the seal. We talk about 19 for the park plant. Uh, our 12 are all Canadian, but one. And they're all uh, Manitoba trained, northern Manitoba trained, so they're a little different than some of the others. So we're cautiously optimistic that the majority of them will stay. Up to 12 for our half time, so in fact it's 10 full time. So. That's probably better considering our concerns with space. I went to the Code Red meeting here in our office a while back, which was interesting. I better do my homework and read that data that I was supposed to have for our next meeting, which I haven't done yet. Maple Leaf Day had a special significance, to, I think, to the community. We had, in fact, 20, 30 people show up for that. And a dedication to Francie Baird, our, one of our forefathers, four father women persons. Appreciate what she's done, and when I drive down Main Street and drive down the south side streets and the trees, it's pretty awesome. It's only going to get better. Uh, G5 last meeting at the, at the uh, we hosted it was awesome. I, I really appreciated the presentation by the school division, where they're proactive, showing some of their concerns uh, relative to numbers and space, and uh, they've got a hot spot uh, they're in. But I appreciate the, the comments by uh, our council specifically. But tomorrow, I would certainly like to invite Council to a lunch meeting from 12 to 1 at the Albert Shark and Friendship Center, where the one-hour presentation of Missing Indigenous Women, Missing and Murdered, so you're, you're invited to that. And I'll make it fine for this. There's Swan Valley Outdoors uh, dinner October 21st, where the money all stays in the Swan Valley, which certainly helps our community. Not a dollar is going out, so I think that's a a change from some of the other entities that we've had in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Friedman. Um, we hired a new uh, clerk at the library. Her name is Rosemary Pritchin. We did interviews. About, she had a uh, county of 14 applications. So after we went through them all, we did the interviews with six and we picked this. Yeah, she's very outgoing. She'd be great with the kids, which is what we needed somebody like that in there. Um, just a heads up, there's going to be a folk fest in 2018, if anybody's interested. We're going to have a meeting next week to see if there's anybody who wants to take part. Um, 40 people showed up as volunteers for the Curling Club Next Nationals, which nice. was last week. It was a tremendous turnout. All the committees have uh, lots of bodies, which is great. Um, the Code Red the other morning was very interesting, very enlightening. It just, uh, I thought it was very, very good. Um, I enjoyed the uh, G5 meeting last night. Besides fantastic supper, it was very informative with the school board, um, I thought. And uh, Lisa and Megan did an outstanding job. I think those girls have just gone above and beyond. And I also attended the uh, Arboretum when we had the dedication to Francie. And it was very well attended and uh, I think she'd be pleased. Thank you. Councilor Sacco. Too much to report that hadn't been reported, but uh, I too was at the Code Red meeting on the 20, 27th there of September here with our emergency measures officer. Uh, it sounds like it's a, possibly something that we should look into with the way that natural disasters and uh, events are taking place. It's, Code Red is kind of a, I guess, a national alert system and it's pretty well recognized. It was used in Florida with Hurricane. Irma, it's, it's used worldwide, so they, they do have good connections and they do have a, a pretty good system. And it's to me, the cost isn't isn't something that you think it would be. It, it's actually cost effective, I think. And 
they came up with a plan that we could share with our neighbors of Swan Valley West to make it even a little more affordable. So there's some questions to be answered and possible because they, they limit you on the amount of minutes you can use in a year with your plan type. But there will be more to come on that. Uh, Mr. Kirkpatrick, our emergency measures officer, is going to do a little bit more homework on it and report back to us. Uh, G5 yesterday was was always good. It's always nice to network with our with our neighboring municipalities and our school division. I do not envy our school division board of trustees. They have a lot of work ahead of them. Definitely declining uh, declining uh, enrollment at a lot of these outlying schools is, is definitely going to be an issue, and they're going to have some tough decisions to make. I think as a G5, we have to work together and try to come up with a plan. Uh, there's going to be some hard decisions, that's for sure. Uh, tomorrow evening, the uh, CEO from Travel Manitoba is going to be in town. There's going to be a meeting at the Legion Hall tomorrow night at 7. Everybody's welcome to go there. It's kind of nice to see them actually come up here because we, we are working on you know, a tourism plan for the valley and trying to promote the valley a little more. So they're gonna they're gonna be doing some touring around, I believe, tomorrow, and we're gonna take them for lunch and, and take them for supper and pick their brains a little bit to see what uh, what we can do better and what we are doing good, and hopefully uh, come up with some new ideas. That's all the report. Good, thank you, Councillor Glory. Um, our water committee met. Uh, Met this weekend, uh, we've got some developments in on the water sewer front as far as how things have been done. So we're hoping to have a bylaw to bring to council uh, shortly. Um, the uh, the main change will be to do with rates as well as as possibly responsibility of of uh, who's responsible for for repairs on on water and sewer line. But I'll wait until the actual bylaw comes before saying more on that. Um, just to echo the comments on, on the G5 from last night, uh, it was, you know, probably one of the more informative or uh, G5s that we've been to as far as there's some pretty serious stuff being talked about as far as education in the valley and not to knock what Councillor Sack was saying, but I, you mentioned the outlying schools. And I, and I think it wouldn't be fair, it's, it's going to be all of our responsibility because when you look at their stats, even our own schools in the town of Swan River are far under, underutilized and the board is going to have to look at it as a whole and I think we are all going to be prepared to take our pound of flesh on this. So it's, uh, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a, a very not nice thing that, uh, that they're going to have to deal with to try and get a handle on, uh, on their costs. Um, and, but it was also good to hear from the uh, the healthcare recruitment people that uh, that was pretty impressive. That out of all the uh, different areas in Manitoba, we're the only ones to get more than two. Uh, we're, we're in a class of our own outside of Winnipeg, so that that was very good. Um, just one other question, from Julie: Are we still expecting the new garbage and special services bylaws shortly? Okay, just want to make sure that's on track. Okay, and that's all for me. Councillor Sackle has a question. Just triggered, uh, just triggered something in my mind when you were talking about the school and how our, our schools in, in town here are being underutilized. And, and I never thought of it last night. And I don't know if there's any possibilities or, or what they should do, but I know the Living World Bible College is bringing in 130 students this year alone. And they're, and they're short of facilities and they're buying up spaces in town. Maybe we can get some sort of a... Well, I, I don't know exactly the, the education or what they're doing. If it, if some of it can be melded or maybe joined together, but you know, if they're if they're if they're doing such a fine job of bringing these students in, maybe there's more possibility for immigration bringing more students to fill some of these empty empty seats. If we can pass that on to our school division, some sort of a, get some sort of a joint meeting, maybe there's idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, nothing really new. Uh, what was that? The the code red uh, presentation by our EMO officer and Councilor Sack said waiting back for some more information and questions that was posed from the seminar uh, before 
he brings a presentation or a proposal for decision to council on that, but it was a very impressive uh, um, tool that could be used for getting out emergency notifications instantaneously to um, everybody that is required versus mass, but can be very specific. And then attended the G5 meeting last night where I had two guys in presentations and I don't envy the school division at all. Um, and then we had one uh, by the medical recruitment committee, which is kudos to them for their hard work. But uh, I think one, one school division and a lot of other committees need to look back at other successful committees. And it's, it's like uh, the norm is not the norm. You gotta think to be successful and to survive now, you gotta think outside the box. And that's where I think the school division needs to move to start thinking outside the boxes which they're looking for feedback on that and medical recruitment committee um, were successful because of you know, getting six physicians because instead of the, just waiting for the regional health authority to find a community uh, or the physicians for the community um, local recruiters went outside the box and was the only community excluding the city of Winnipeg that got six physicians out of the way uh, recruitment process. So um, I think this, the whole mantra is there. It's got to have to think outside the box to, to move forward. So, yeah. And that's a good idea. Like with the living room, like if they're looking for rental space or whatever, definitely pass that on. It's, that's all. Okay, thank you. Julie. I also attended the G5 meeting last night and the Code Red meeting last week. I also attended the meeting regarding uh, the work group program, the, one of the programs that we sponsor um, over at the brand new building. Um, I went to Jack Dick's office this time for the meeting and, and uh, that building by Quickstop is beautiful inside. Um, and also to let you know that um, the work crew program and SVTP program. Uh, we'll have some rep representatives coming uh, to the November 7th council meeting to provide some information and overview again of those programs so that uh, everyone has a, uh, again, a clear understanding of how they work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and I'd like you to, uh, those of you on the uh, TLE committee, we had a meeting scheduled for October 10th with Whiskey Secret uh, First Nation. Um, that's going to be scheduled to October 24th at 7 p.m. What, October 24th? Yeah, October 24th. It's a Tuesday. I may be away that day. The mayor should be here. She? Yeah. You'll email us that information? I will. Thank you. That would be with Westview. Right? Was we? Yeah, I probably did it And that's it for me. That's it? Okay. Well, pretty much for what everybody's already covered already, and some outstanding reports, but um, for sure last night and last week has been the highlight was the G5 last night. And again, school division, you know, as time moves on, like Councillor Sackle says, enrollments drop, they have to make some tough decisions. and. And the community is going to be informed, as they said, and then move forward with a time of consultation and public input. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. But uh, at the same time, I think that they'll you know, have our support and uh, we'll be with them too and, uh, and see how it goes through, through this transition, if we want to call it. So, so moving forward, uh, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sackle. Councillor White, uh, Lady Wine. <laughs> do, do you? Carry on. Councillor White, if, if, if uh, you need to recess, then we can uh, recess. <laughs> I'd like to say I heard you, but I didn't. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sacco, resolved that the accounts as well be hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check number 21299 to number 21374 for a total of $314,356,085. Payroll account from check number 4071 to number 
4078 for a total of 90740 at 25 cents. Discussion? Councillor Sackler. Uh, check number 21328, Canadian National Railway for 6750. Equipment. I know that's usually either the street sweeper or the back truck. Maybe not even the street sweeper. The back truck, is it? Uh, that is the back truck, yeah. We had repairs to it already, or what's. We had our boiler go down, yeah. We had to get a new coil for our boiler. Okay. Measures. They're paying $1,800 of that $2,700. Oh, really? I was just going to say, I imagine there's no uh, recourse, but good. Uh, check 21343 to the city of Dauphin for 1312. Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolve that the Town of Swan River Accessibility Plan be adopted as received. Julie, do you want to expand on that at all? Um, we have to have a accessibility plan in place um, by the end of November. All municipalities are expected to have something in place. So this um, plan outlines um, you know, our facilities and, and how accessible they are and what plans we have in place to um, help people with accessibility issues. Uh, we've started uh, training all of our um, frontline staff uh, with a specialized customized customer service training for uh, people with uh, accessibility issues. So it's something that um, was brought forward by the province and something that we have to do. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle, resolved that the assessment alterations amendments as listed by Manitoba Indigenous and Municipal Relation Assessment Services dated July 17, 2017, September the 18th, 2017, and September the 25th, 2017, be made to the 2017 property tax rule under the authority of Section 306 and 326 of the Manitoba Municipal Act. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, moved 
by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries, and resolved that the mayor and CAO be uh, three authorized to sign the Airport Agricultural Land Lease Agreement with the Municipality of Swan Valley West and the Lease C. Discussion? Councillor Doria. So the town actually owns the land that the airport is on, not the Airport Commission? That's right. The town yeah. and the municipality and, okay. of Swan Valley West. Okay. Um, so was it was I know there had been some talk about uh, getting a request for for tenders on on the rental. I know Councilor White, I'm looking at you because you're on the Airport Commission. Was was it or is this just a continuation of the previous rental of the land? Yeah. Uh, what uh, Julie did, she posted in the newspaper saying it was open for bids. Bids were received and the loans that was accepted. Hi. Pardon. Hi. The lowest bid or the highest? Thank you. The highest bid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which was not a lot higher than it was before, but it was somewhat higher. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council White, did you have a question? No, thank you. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Moving, moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Fries, and resolved that the following grass cutting added, or invoice be added to taxes. Rule 2600, Cindy Lou Christine Makasoff, invoice 13253 for $123. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Fries, and resolved that the sale of sorry, resolved that the sale of six youth SCBAs and fifteen tanks to the municipality of Minnetonka Bozeman for the total sum of three thousand eight hundred and seventy-five dollars be approved. Further be it resolved that these items are sold as is with no implied warranty, and the purchaser is required to ensure items pass testing prior to use. Discussion, Council Morio. Um, the proceeds from these uh, sale of these tanks and stuff—is that going to the general revenues or to some fire department reserve or general reserves or revenue? Okay. Further discussion. Some I think it should go to the fire department. First, I'd like to be wrong. All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the sale of four used SCBAs and 23 tanks to the municipality of Mountain for the total sum of $2,150 be approved. Further be resolved that these items are sold as is with no implied warranty and the purchaser is required to ensure items pass testing prior to use. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Fries, and resolved that the sale of 10 low pressure aluminum tanks to the municipality of Swan Valley West for the total sum of $500 be approved. Further, be it resolved that the units are sold as is with no implied warranty, and the purchaser is required to ensure units pass testing prior to use. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the CAO, CFO, and General Manager of Recreation be authorized to attend the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce and Myers and Norris Penny Business Insights event on October the 24th, 2017 in Swan River. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Should be an interesting uh, seminar. Uh, moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the town accept the quote from Edson Trucking Limited for the supply of 60 tons of road salt in the amount of $5,700. Derek, do you want to discuss any of that? Uh, just to let Council know that uh, there is a good sized salt pile left over from last winter. It was the warmest winter on, well, one of them on record, but. Uh, we started last year, I believe, at 1,200 yards. We'll be starting this coming up winter with 900. 
So we have cut back our our sand salt. We can always order more. So we figured we we try we do lose salt in the rains over the summer. So we don't want that pile left over. So we're reducing our amount of sand salt. <coughs> Also, what? I'm not sure if such a thing as an average ice situation. How many yards would you use? There's an issue out there. We want to get a medevac in. We want to get that runway cleaned off. How much sand would you use? We wouldn't use any of the sand salt. The, the pilots don't allow us, or they wouldn't want us putting that salt on the okay. airport. We use just warm sand. They don't want the salt on there. So this other material we want would be used for that? Uh, you want the thing that's going to clean the runway off? No, it's just warm sand for the runway. The commission, from what I understand, approved the purchase of that special... Beet juice? No, not beet juice. Oh, sorry, that, that other... That that sorry, that's that's not salt, know. but it's like an emergency de-icer. Yeah, what? that would be used. That would be the de-icer. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. That doesn't bother the pilots of the airport. No, that stuff certified okay, by the no, no uh, thoughts on the beet juice. Is it beet juice in the residential streets that some municipalities use? Yes. I feel, yeah, it's interesting. Is it actually effective as a salt? Yeah, they say it is, yeah. I'm, I'm just using the real peat this year. Yeah. Is it something that you're going to... We're, we're to? definitely looking into it, yeah. Okay. For the streets? Yeah. How many yards of that would you use? I don't know yet. That's we need to be for in the beat department. <laughs> I'd like to see a comparison or something, you know, maybe a decision paper on that. And, uh, well, I've, that's exactly what we're going to do is compare it and see how it works in, in the middle of Canada. Okay, perfect. All in favor? Opposed? Clear. Mm. Moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the following building permit applications be received. Do I have to list off every single one? Yeah. yeah okay. 745889 Manitoba Limited, 218 8th Avenue South, two side by side units for $380,000. 745879 Manitoba Limited, 218 8th Avenue South, two garages, $20,000. Brendan Fedorcha, 421 11th Avenue North, Gable Ends, $6,000. Jonathan Fleming, 1312 First Street North, insulation replace, siding, $4,000. Andrew Hardy, 208 Dixie Road, it's a demolition, zero. Karen Barock, 602 Second Street North, deck, $1,500. Roman Catholic Church, 116 7th Avenue South, repair fence, $2,100. Living Word Bible College, 224 9th Avenue North, renovation $6,500. Joel and Marilyn Delorier, 507 Kelsey Trail, fire pit $250. Riverview Condo and Suites, 507 Kelsey Trail, demo zero. Riverview Condo and Suites, 507 Kelsey Trail, four condos $712,000. Riverview Condo and Suites, 507 Kelsey Trail, garage, $32,000. Discussion, uh, Council Moria. So when we have these individuals, why do they need two separate building permits? Why can't they have one? Like is, is, is it cheaper to have one, like combine it to one for them? Like is there a minimum permit fee? Why do we have to separate all these out? There's no difference in cost. And, um I don't remember what the reason was. I, I did talk to Ron about it one time. Um, it was one of those properties over on Hill Avenue. And it was something to do with just the timing of what was being done for inspections and stuff. But, but there is no difference in the cost. To me, it's just a paperwork nightmare yeah. to have multiple permits on one property for. Well, we, the town has a demolition permits mm -hmm. I'm guessing like he could just say Riverview condos and suites you know uh, three permits you know, equal seven hundred and forty four thousand dollars as long as there's no difference in price then that's no there isn't I, I did ask him that question Councilor Sackle just a comment nice to see over a million dollars worth of new development going on within our valley in, in the town of Swan River here in one month not applied for very good. Good point. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 
Okay, moved by Councillor Sackle, seconded by Councillor Fries, and resolved that Jody Williams' position be changed from casual lifeguard to part-time lifeguard, effective October the 3rd, 2017. Discussion? Councillor White. What's the difference? Um, seniority. Yeah, seniority. Okay, yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor uh, Morio. Resolved that the pursuit to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act Council going to community committee and close the meeting to the public. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? 